You know, there's no manual for when you're lost. When life just takes everything. I decided to go on YouTube. Maybe a hobby or somebody to talk to, maybe at some point. Somebody will listen. I don't know. Sometimes I think it's got to be somebody in this world that knows what I'm talking about. Maybe they just ain't. You know, short story, long story, whatever way you want to swing it. I was young, came from abuse. My mom was basically an evil dictator. You didn't do what she said, got your ass beat. Don't walk, don't talk, don't breathe. Sit like a mummy on a couch. Did something wrong, got your ass beat. And I had my brother next to me. Well, long story short, I got four siblings. I got three brothers and a sister. Actually, I got five, but the other one I'll tell you about later. Two oldest brothers, Mike and Ricky. They were like, I don't know. <laughs> I come from an Italian family. My mom was full blooded Italian. But she didn't think enough of us to give us a like, decent Italian father, I guess. She went with a random hillbilly and then uh, my piece of shit father. Never gave a fucking piece of nothing about me. So I come out of a pair of idiots that were nothing but abusive. Both of them are dead. So early on it was all abuse. All you wanted to do was hide. Very sheltered when I was young. All the way up until I was 20. Then my mom got sick. The first. Everybody thought she was going nuts. Started doing all this shit, acting all crazy, throwing knives at people. One day, she decided to throw. Mom, my brother, decided to try to have her commit it because something she did one night. Turns out, the woman was having a stroke. And my brother had her commit it because he didn't understand she was having a stroke or they called it the trans ischemic attack but it was doing damage to her brain and if you ever saw her MRI she had a spot on her brain she had some kind of brain tumor or something it was something on her brain and maybe that just affected the way she was I don't know God knows how long she had it whatever but long story short brothers came to me afterwards and bullied me into taking care of her. They were my life. I didn't have no choice. I was sheltered. I was a scared kid. I was a stupid kid. I was very smart with books and that kind of shit. I had a future. I could have went a lot of places. But instead, I got forced to work in like a family dollar take care of my mom. The whole future basically got flushed down the toilet. Any chance I had for anything. My fucking brothers didn't care. And my sister. My sister's the oldest. And the story about that was when you go to my family line it was me and then seven years later you got my brother Dean and then you go two years up from that my brother Mike's next and my brother Ricky and my sister Debbie finally. 
Go two, 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 two. I'm 42. Here I am, 42, and guess what? Never had a chance to live. Broke is a joke. Had a wife, had four kids. In the meantime, when my mom was sick, little did I know, the person that came in and helped me, you know, she saved my mom's life. My mom got to a point where she stopped eating, and she helped me out in a way that I never forgot. And, you know, I turned a blind eye for everything. I loved her to death. But through it all, I lost my way. That's everything that happened took its toll on me. I got angry about everything. I was pissed off the way my life was. I knew I was meant for better things. And I knew my fucking brothers just gave a fuck about themselves. They didn't give a fuck about me. I was their scapegoat. So my life gets flushed down the toilet. I took a wife, figuring she was a godsend, but it turns out she was bipolar. Then it turns out, later on in life, she was going to become schizophrenic. And she was going to become my worst nightmare. Thanks to that, I lost my four kids. They were adopted out. So not only I was taking care of a sick mother, I had a bipolar wife. So, and then I had these dictators telling me what I was going to do. My own life was nothing but stress. My kids would never understand it. And you know what? Maybe they don't have to. It's not their job to understand what the hell I went through. All I can do is spit it in this recorder and hope one day somebody sees it and understands it. At this point in my life, I don't got nobody. Through it all. Because everything went down. My family pretty much turned against me. Got blamed for everything. One person. Honestly. The world ain't my fault. But it seemed that way. Watched a woman who I loved it with everything I had. Slowly go away. Along the way my mom died. Got sick. A lot of shit came out of that. My wife lost it. I raised her first son, Paulie, until he was 11 years old. He went to his dad's looking for a better life, and yeah, guess what? I guess he found it. But, I don't know. Nowadays, well, I left my wife in 2006. I thought I found something in a woman that I met in Philly, but... <laughs> turns out I've been better off saying where I was. She was out for nothing but herself. Probably this damn day she's still like that. I wouldn't doubt it one little bit. I must feel sorry for the bastard has to be with her. Because her world's about her and her kids. She was always the same goddamn way. My kids were never good enough, though. Best, the best way to sum her up is one statement she made to me. One night, my, old, my ex, yeah, granted she was crazy, she called me to the, from a hospital. And they said that if I come to pick the kids up, that they were going to set away child services. Well. 
I turned around and, well, I backed up a minute. She had a restraining order on me. No. I talked to doctors, police, this, that. It was okay. Well, this girl on my... Well, I'm not even going to mention her name because her name ain't even worth mentioning. Said to me, I don't care if you never see your kids again. They ain't coming here. I don't care if it means... No, she said, I don't care if it means you lose your kids forever. They ain't coming here. That's how much of a self-centered fucking egotistical bitch she was. But this bitch gets to work at a doctor's office, gets to have a good life, gets to have a husband, all these good things in life. I don't have a fucking dime to my name and I'm having a hard fucking time getting a job. And I end up just doing stupid shit, making stupid money. Nothing. Pretty much next to nothing. I never get any breaks now. I don't know body, no wife, no kids, no nothing. Now, this would be a great time for have some money in my pocket, but no, my life can't be like that. No part of my life was ever bright. There's always a bunch of bullshit. But you know what? thing I'm proud of, I always believed in God, never stopped, that's a mission now, I'll die believing in God, because I know there's a reason, I, you know what I contributed to, people ain't gonna like me for saying this, but I think I'm like Job from the Bible, you know the story about Job, he's a man Dedicated his life to God. Great Christian. Even God himself used to boast about him. Well, one day, him and the devil, God and the devil were having a conversation. And this bothers me. Then I read this and think about it. But... A man had seven kids. Apparently he had twelve servants, and apparently he loved them too. He was a very godly man. He was a very good man. Now, God says to him, well, the devil wants to test him. I don't think he'd believe if he took everything away from him, blah, blah, blah. Well, story goes, Devil said to him, uh, God says to him, do whatever you want. Do his things, and it's his things. It actually says it that way, his things. Like, his children are his things. That was the first problem I had with the story. Well, but you can't do nothing to him. Okay. So, basically kills off his kids. All this tragedy strikes his life, and servants, everything. Everybody gets wiped out. Job turns around and... Fucking mouse. That's what I do. That's what I do. I just saw a fucking mouse came in. He just came right up to my bed and said hello. Talking about Job, and I got a mouse visitor. Well, anyway. His life in Gloucester shitty. Well, Joe Bass is God in prayer. Why? Why did you do this to me? God turns around and says to him, basically not to question me. You ain't, you don't understand evil. Don't question me. I guess people think I'm wrong, like, you're devout Christians and all this other stuff, but at that point, you take somebody's kids, 
you take everything, you're not allowed to question nothing. Why can't you question anything? You're gonna, you know, my problem with this, life, story, I connect with that guy, Joe. And it feels like I lived his life. My life knew nothing but tragedy. You know what? I lost everything a man could lose. A house, two cars, wife, four kids, mom and dad. Dad never gave a fuck about me. He was a joke. A little story about him. Here's a guy who, for the last two years, he lived in my house, my mom's house. He was running around with this Margaret fucking bitch. Ends up being his wife later on. Well, by all accounts, he was an abusive bastard, and a lot of people told me I was better off not knowing him that well. Well, of course I seen him, but it took him until I was six years old for him to even fucking bother with me. I'll never forget it. it. Shows you what kind of father he was. First time I seen him, he fucking smelled like a brewery. He stunk a beer. I looked at him and I didn't like him. I didn't want to be near him. But when I saw him, he kisses me like right on the lips, number one. And he like grabs my face. And he was just, to me, he was just fucking nasty. I didn't like him. I didn't want to be around him. Even when I went over there. Maybe it was, you know, maybe it was just me, but I never said nothing, obviously. I was I was a scared kid. I was always a good kid. I was always quiet. I just shot up and stayed out of the way. I guess you could say that's my problem. Well, getting back to this idiot. He lived in my mom's house for two years. Well, he lived in my mom's house for a total of seven years. But the last two years, he was running around with this Margaret bitch. Well, needless to say, when I came along, count the nine months, and he stayed six months. So you figure 15 months. So... It's 24 and I made two years, so you figure nine months, even before I was conceived, he's running around, he's running around with my mom. So guess what? He's running around with this bitch for nine months, so by the time I'm conceived, of course they probably don't find out until I'm like two, three months already in the shoot, so to speak. And at that point, I think my dad just... You know, he didn't want a kid. True story. My mom was on a pill. My dad was wearing a condom and even told me he used spermicide. He wanted me aborted. He he made it known to me growing up. When he was drunk, when I would go over his house, he was always drunk. He did not go a day without drinking. His fucking liver probably gave up on him. They said he died of cardiac arrest. He probably fucking died of liver arrest. Honestly. Well, that's part of my story. It's most of my story. Not really, but... Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, and about 20 million more tragedies just like that. I could tell you horror stories all night long. Not that you would want to listen, but just for the things I told you, you can get a good idea what I dealt with. All well, this shit with my wife, being a scared kid, blah, blah, fucking blah, takes me into my 30s. By the time I'm 34, I move out of the house. I go to Philly with this other fucking joke that lasted all about two and a half years. 
only about the first five months were even decent. It was great then, but bipolar wife. I found out she cheated on me seven years in. I was with her for 13, never cheated back, and that's God's honest truth. When anybody wants to believe it or not, it's the God's honest truth. I even got accused of fucking her sister, but hands to God, never did. That was a bunch of bullshit. Now, I have a friend that helped me out. I found out she got breast cancer. This is the latest stuff. It doesn't look good. There's a good chance she, she might not make it. You know what? She did me dirty in a lot of ways, but you know what? I did it in that situation. I faced it down. I decided to become her friend. Once I decided to be, find out why, I faced it down. And you know what? We made better friends. And as it says in the Bible, turn the other cheek. Well, I think about this Job thing. And I'll admit, as a Christian goes, I suck. I curse at God. I say God off of things. I even tell him to go fuck himself. I say a lot of bad things. I'm very disrespectful. And I'll admit that. But in a way, I think he understands me. I always had to. But, you know, the way I figure it, he has to give me some kind of latitude. But, what do you do? What do you do when your life is nothing but shit? You know? I'm thinking about one thing. I keep thinking about it. I'm in a, like a movie extra. I even kicked around the idea of trying my hand at comedy because, you know what, I can be funny and you get me on a roll, but I don't know, being in front of an audience, I don't know about that. I have my fears. I'm very you know, you wouldn't know what to know me, but I have a lot of fears. I don't want to be bothered sometimes. To know me, you probably think I was a strange person. I stay to myself, like, all the time. I pretty much live in my room. Why? Because everybody who's ever came across me did me dirty. Not one person in my life, without question, not one person has ever been loyal to me. And I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time I've always been loyal. Yeah, I've had my fuck-ups. I happens to be the last one. This relationship I had, I kind of broke down and I did the cheating thing. It's first time, actually. Nobody probably would believe it. I don't care. I'm beyond giving a fuck what people think anymore. That's the truth. I have no reason to lie. There's nobody to lie to. I'm talking to myself here with the notion that I'm pretty much going to be the only one looking at it because I looked at the other ones I got up there. I don't got that many fucking room people looking at it anyway, so. I figure maybe if light shines on the dog's ass one day, maybe somebody will go and look at some of this shit and actually give a fuck. I you know, you look around my room, you can see in the background I got all kinds of women on the wall. You know what I think? About stars and all that. I could easily be that. I could easily... I'd probably be tailor-made for it, honestly sheltered as I was, living her lifestyle would be easy. I, don't, I really don't need, well, then again, maybe not. But, I don't know. 
I know how to be by myself, trust me. It would be a lot easier to have the money. Right now i got about 80 cents to my name. Don't have an income. And this shit's been popping up the last few years. Which I never had this problem before. Seems to be getting worse. I don't even know technically if everything's going to be okay, this, that, or any other thing. I don't fucking know. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. I don't know if I'm going to die on the street. I sure as hell don't think anybody ever gave a fuck. You know what my dream in life is? Always been. Since I was knee high to a grasshopper, as they say. One person to love me unconditionally and me to give that back to them. Simple. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I always thought it'd be my luck. I'd hit it rich one day. Maybe karma come back around. Do me a favor. Dump a big pile of money on me for all I suffered. Just my ship come in one day. You know what I think in that situation? What the hell do you do? As far as another person goes. At that point, do you ever trust anybody? I couldn't picture myself ever wanting to be married at that point. Ever trusting anybody. Everybody's ever did me dirty. Why would I trust anybody? Yeah, in a way it's kind of weird. I think it would happen for one reason. It would give me a dilemma. Because I don't think I'd ever want nobody after that. Oh, they'd all want me. But I wouldn't want them. Because you know what I kept thinking, what I would keep thinking about? Where the fuck were you when I knew you? You wouldn't even have pissed on me. You would have, would you have gone out with me? When I had 80 cents in my pocket? No. Oh, but I got a big pile of money in the fucking bank. I got all these millions of fucking dollars now, and suddenly you want something to do with me. Fuck you. I don't play that game. And especially, you know, you have a lot of money. You're going you're gonna to want somebody attractive, obviously. I guess never had my share. You can't, I never had anybody, like, outrageously beautiful. I never had that word. Well, I guess if I had money, there might be a shot that it could happen, but at that point, do you even trust anyone? No. You could say prenups and all this other fucking shit, but... I don't know. The world's a greedy place. I'm see, I'm sitting here debating on having money. Good thing to do when you have 80 cents in your pocket, right? Maybe it's my delusions, maybe it's my dream, maybe it's my fantasy or whatever you want to call it, but I'll tell you something. When I worked, I busted my ass for a lot of companies, never respect. I was always a good hard worker. I wanted to be. This life never gave me a chance. It was always chaos. Always bullshit. Always something I was dealing with. I guess it was only lately, the last couple of years, where I seemed to free myself up from the bullshit. You know what the problem about that is? Once you free yourself up from the bullshit, I don't know where to go with it. I don't even know what to do with it. I'm afraid to walk out the door. I'm afraid to take a chance. Because every fucking thing I've ever done, it seemed like it failed. Went bad. Something happened. I was set up. My whole life was a big fucking setup. I feel like my life was a big cosmic fucking joke. And this is how I feel. This is the truth about me at this point in my life, so, you know, if anybody thing ever did good, it never did happen to me, <laughs> I, you know, honestly, 
I would relish this video. Maybe if nobody else even wanted to watch it, I don't know. As I was somebody one day, a lot of people would watch it, so it's all of a sudden somebody. Yeah, and you know, you look at all those people and be like, all right, where the fuck were you? And that's how you feel. It was great. You know, there's famous people that came from the street. Like, I guess a good one would be Eminem. He was a guy who made millions and millions and millions of dollars. And at one point, he was abused. He had a shit life. He had fucking uh, people hating on him. and Went through a lot of shit when he was growing up. And his mom. Everything else. You know... It happens. As they say, dog can sh uh, light can shine on a dog's ass once in a while. I'm waiting for light to shine on this dog's ass. Yeah, I can be better. I think. People don't understand you. I'll tell you what. They don't understand you because they don't have to live it. They don't, nobody in this world knows what it's like not to have nobody. Nobody to really have your back. You turn around, I mean, even here, even the people that do care, they're not your family. Sadly, that becomes evident every day. You see it. It's not their fault, you know. They're just trying to be nice, just that and the other thing. They're just doing what they do. It's not like it's their fault. They didn't make your life the way it was. It's nobody's responsibility. But at the same token, nobody will ever understand. Nobody will ever understand that I know of anyway. Well, it's like to have absolutely nobody. To have absolutely nothing. To have absolutely nowhere to turn. And yeah, I've been in that situation. <laughs> I live in that situation, you might as well say. <sighs> and you know, it just seems like it's going to get worse. I'm 42 years old, I'm done inside, I'm dead inside, I don't, you know, I look, when I wake up in the morning, I say to myself, what's the fucking sense in doing anything, why prolong this fucking life, why bother, it's supposed to be such a gift, right, yeah. what gift, a life full of nothing, a life full of nothing for the next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. My luck, it'll be 40 years. Because I don't want any of it. Just the way it is. And then people don't know how lucky they are. They don't know what they got. They sit in their own little bubbles, their own little worlds. They don't know any better, and you know what? It's better that they don't. I never would know well, another human being to know what it's like to feel like what I feel on a daily basis. The loneliness, the agony. Just the f mere fact that you don't belong to nothing or nobody. When you turn around, your phone never rings. Oh, my phone's off, so I can't ring. But nobody gets it. Nobody understands it. Honestly, nobody gives a fuck. They wake up and they got their own shit to deal with. They don't have time for you. That's just the way it is. The way the world works. It's sad. We live in a world where people get forgotten. I guess I'm a prime example of that. You know, I guess I think about the money thing. 
Because it would be so apropos that a person who had nothing, meant nothing to nobody, finally one day something good happens. And all of a sudden, and they, all these fake ass motherfuckers want to claim they're your friends. Then all of a sudden people are going to want to be around you. And guess what? You're going to let some of them be around you. You know why? Because nobody was ever around you. Nobody ever wanted to give you any kind of attention. So yeah. Maybe it would be nice. But who do you trust? Nobody. Who has your back? Nobody. But I'll tell you what I'll do with it. I'll go see a lot of things, do a lot of things I never got a chance to do. Maybe get this broke-ass body of mine in shape. Maybe put a smile on my face once in a while. I don't know. Guess truth be told, I could say a lot on this tape, but one thing I will say, you can't imagine it. No matter how hard you try, no matter how long you live, you have no fucking clue what absolute nothingness feels like. You have no fucking idea waking up and knowing that when push comes to shove, you have nothing or nobody. You're expendable. And that's the way it is. You have no family. You have no real friends. There's no brotherhood, there's no kinship, there's nothing that normal people have. People take for granted what they don't understand. And that's the way it is. They don't know. They don't have the capacity to know. You know, I've seen a few people that kind of have the same situation going on. Out of respect, I won't mention any names. But I know what it feels like. I know all too well what it feels like. I know more about it than they do. They just don't know it. People wonder why I stay in my room, I stay away from people. Because I don't belong. All you gotta do is turn your TV off and sit on your bed and listen. See the world go her own without you. And you know what happens? It happens every day. All you gotta do is close the door and guess what? You don't exist anymore. People just do not understand that. When that fucking door right there closes, I cease to exist. Just like I did when I was a kid. And I hid in my room because I didn't want my mom to yell at me. But she made sure every fucking day she made her rounds opening the door, yelling and screaming for no fucking reason at all. We weren't even doing anything. But you just find a fucking reason to yell at you. To hit you, to beat on you. And that's what you had to live with every day. But you got used to being a, by yourself a protection. Nobody knows what that's like. Everybody I know had people that they could trust. Even my friend. She had fun, but like people that got her through. 
I never really had that. I never had one trusted person that I could confide in. There's a lot of things about me nobody knows. There's a lot of things about me I go to my grave with. That's the fucking sad part about it. I think the reason why I keep making these videos... I don't know why. Maybe I'm just being a fool. But... Sometimes I see something coming. I always thought it all my life. I always... In the back of my head. My intuitions about things have always been right on the money. The funny part about it is, the only one that hasn't come true yet was that last one. The big one. Where that ship finally comes in, something finally happens, something finally goes right. That would be a great day. Mm -mm. I was afraid that I'm moment. It would be in the back of my head too. That'd be the moment I would fear my life. I spend my life now not giving a fuck if I live or died. I guess in that situation, I'd all of a sudden give a shit. But give a shit about what? Money? The fact that you can do things. I definitely would go see my kids. I have one boy I could see. And I'd make the trek down there. And I'd make the effort to do it. God is my witness, I would. Whether he wanted to see me or not, I'd make the attempt. And I'd go down there with a team of fucking bulldog fucking shark lawyers. And I'd get me some fucking rights. You best believe that. Now see, in that situation, that money would do me a whole lot of favors. But I'm talking about shit that doesn't even exist, so right now I'm just dreaming about it. Maybe I want to get it on film. I have it out there somewhere, because I know I said it. It's October 2014. Like October 21st or 20, I know actually it's the 22nd. <sighs> you know what? Maybe it's all a dream or a nightmare. I've always been looking for one thing all my life true love. I couldn't even get that from my own family. They were a lot of evil people. Mean people. All they wanted to do was control. Control. Hate. Hit. Hurt. In any way. Whether it was physical, mental, or anything else. I wasn't cut from that cloth. I wasn't that kind of person. But yes, I did make that mistake once. About 15 years back. I made the stupidest mistake in my life. I hit somebody that I loved. I slapped them in the face. Oh, you could justify it all day long. And believe me, most people I tell the story to would justify it for me. I came in. It was her oldest boy. The one that wasn't mine. For my ex-wife. His name is Paul. Now, he doesn't even know this story. He doesn't even understand. He was the reason I hit his mother. But he's the biggest one that hates me. Oh, I see what you did to my mother. Do you know why, asshole? I'll tell you why. I came in one day. 
Polly was in the corner of his room. I came up the stairs. I came in from work. I got off early. Went upstairs. He's hovering. He's sitting there crouching down in the corner of the room. There's a blanket over him. He's shaking like a leaf. I, I knew something was wrong. I go in there. I peel back the blanket. He's shaking and shivering. He's in a fucking pair of underwear. And there's lash marks all up and down his black and blood trickling down on him. I saw red. Went to the bathroom door, started pounding on it. And she says, I'm not in the fucking mood. Real cocky. After what I just saw. Well, first part of the story, I wasn't going to handle that situation right no matter what. Because the first thing I did was kick that fucking door off the hinges just the fuck I did. And the whole goddamn frame went with it. The door ended up in the tub. I kicked it. One shot, I kicked that motherfucker frame and all right off the door hinges. That whole fucking door flew into the tub. Oh, she jumped out of her fucking skin. I said, what the fuck do you got to say now? And her fucking eyes got white as, white as fucking fuck. I walked right up into her face. I said, what the fuck was that? What the fuck did you do to that kid? The fucking kid's got lash marks up all up and down. He's got fucking blood all over him. You're going to fucking sit there and tell me that uh, you, you don't got fucking time? And she goes into this and all this and that and what he did and this. Oh, you don't have to deal with him during the day. Oh, you don't know how he acts. Oh, you don't know how he does this and do that. Ooh, what the fuck is he going to do to fucking deserve the way he looks right now? We go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Long story short, I didn't go in there to do anything. I went in there to confront her. And one thing I did say, I triggered what happened next. I said, what if I go and go downstairs and get on the fucking phone and I call the police and I tell them what the fuck you did. And then she turns around and she says to me, well, if you call the fucking police, I'm going to tell them that you did it. And you're never going to see your kids again. And... That's the moment, that's the exact moment, I wish I could take back. When that, when that sentence came out of her mouth, my hand came up, across her face, she fell over the fucking toilet, bounced off the fucking wall, and she fell in between the fucking toilet and the wall. Practically got wedged in there. I actually had to help her out. Because she was stuck. She went ahead and pushed me. And smacking me in the face, doing this, doing that. I can't say I guess I didn't deserve it, but... Kept fucking smacking me in the face. Over and over and over again. I just kept taking it. I kept taking it. I kept taking it. And then she started... Saying this shit. Started fucking saying how I wasn't gonna see the kids again, this, that, and the other thing, and you're gonna be out of here, this, that, and the other thing, and I lost it. It wasn't where it stopped. I took my hand like this, flat handed. And I smacked her over the top of her head. And she bent over forward. And I took the palm of my hand, I kept smacking her in the fucking top of the head. I think I counted about five times that I did it. 
no, she got scared, and lo and behold, the dumbest thing I ever did in my life. I could justify myself saying, oh, it was open-handed, but it doesn't make it any better. I could have closed my fist and did the same fucking thing. It wouldn't have mattered. I was never going to close my fist. That I was never going to do. I figured his slap was enough. And believe me, it was way more than enough. Well, now I gotta tell you the part of the story that you're probably already figured out. I did that to a bipolar schizo. Needless to say, even though it never happened again. It didn't matter. As my witness was once, only once. But it doesn't matter. Then I never, sw I never swung like that. But a lot of stupid shit happened when I was pushing and shoving. She had this thing where she liked to grab at my throat. One time she squeezed my fucking Adam's apple like really hard. So I just kind of hit her hand down, and then she put her hand right back there. Hit it down again. Kept telling her, fucking stop, fucking stop, fucking stop. Then she started smacking me in the face, smacking me in the face, smacking me in the face, smacking me in the face. I grabbed her by the throat, like this, and I shoved her on the fucking bed. This is supposed to be my wife. Well, I guess you can make an argument. I deserved it. Believe me, I make that argument all the time with myself. I don't think nothing too much about what I did. I don't think anything good about it. I don't think there's anything good you can think about it, honestly. It's called a mistake. Here's a bullshit. Constant chaos and bullshit all my life. You have one bad moment, which given my life, I probably should have had a million of them. And you know what? I was always proud of myself. How good I always maintained myself. One stupid maneuver fucks your whole life up. Nobody understands it. And you know what? My life was fucked up before that even happened. I was already knee-deep in this shit when that happened anyway. Mom was sick and dying. Dad didn't give a fuck. I was on my own. The fucking wife was no help. All she did was cheat. She cheated on me more fucking times than I even knew about. She fucked my brothers. Dean and, Rick and Ricky. <laughs> Some family, right? Just long story short, a lot of ways never felt like I even had a chance. I still today wish upon that 
loving star, I guess you could say. Maybe that one person actually... You know, I feel like everybody should get at least one person in their life that they could depend on. That has their back. But if you're Tom Whitfield, guess what? You don't get that. I never had that. I can name all the fucking friends I have, and I guarantee you, there's not one out of the bunch that had my back like I would have theirs. Nobody ever will see that side of me. That's the end of the day. That's the saddest part of all. Nobody will ever know. 42 years. Maybe nobody ever will. I'm at a point right now. I honestly don't care. If I lay down in this bed tonight, turn this light off, and drop stone cold fucking dead, guess what? It would be just fucking fine by me. I'd be like, thank fucking God. And it's sad. Because I never even had a chance to live. I'm 42. Everybody I've known has done things more than I did. I never had nothing, never went nowhere, never seen nothing, probably never will. I probably have the saddest fucking life any human being's ever fucking had. And now I just wait for it to be over. Now I curse the fact that I live. And, you know, I the thing comes back to me every once in a while. What if, my, what if that last thing, the last intuition that I had, ever since my early days, I've been right about all of them. A lot of times in my life. I knew when my kids were going to come around. Hell, for some odd reason, Becky's name was coming up. And... Somehow or another, I knew I knew somehow she was going to come out of the fucking woodwork, too. And she was been stalked on my Facebook lately. Crazy as ever. Still thinks she's a Marine. She talks to invisible people. Full-blown schizophrenic. And once again, Tom's going to get called the babysitter, be a doctor, or do something. I don't know. That's stupid. Your life is spent at the service of others or being in fear of others. And you never get anything out of it. And you're not supposed to be greedy. You're not supposed to ask for anything. But, you know, when does it become ridiculous that your life has totally nothing? When does it become just ridiculously fucking stupid that your life was never nothing, nobody ever gave a fuck, nobody ever loved you, and all you ever did was put yourself out there time and time and time again to every fucking jackass that came along and all they could do is you have to play victim to whatever fucking bullshit that they lived That's all that ever happened to me. I'm like everybody's fucking victim. Everybody meets me and takes their fucking problems out on me. They use you up and then they spit you the fuck out into the gutter. And people do it over and over and over again to a guy that never even had a fucking chance. Make you wonder why lose a little faith in humanity, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, that's my story. Ain't it